Uh, today we are discussing a case about a 35 year old male patient uh, who had presented to us with right flank pain of two week two week duration which was dull in nature and uh, which was relieved with oral analgesics it was non radiating and uh, he had uh, no fever no omitting no lower urinary tract symptoms there was no hematuria or lithuria or burning maturation I think one to ah uh, sir no sir no questions you are happy with what's been presented you don't need any more yes okay. right then tell them to proceed you have to tell them okay. yes i want uh, more to see sir no, but specifically see again when you ask you must say what more you want huh history okay. okay it's all right but if you are asking for other things Say I want this, 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 and this, so that you can quickly get over it. Otherwise, it will consume time. Yeah. So, what do you want in history? So, any uh, history of a constitutional symptom of of uh, means any uh, jaundice or dyspnea. So, some, see, in history, we generally ask for. more common things isn't it uh, so yes, what the first thing we like ask when a patient comes with such a um, presenting complaint this is a presenting complaint is come with this what will we ask for is got any past history similar complaint or any urological history past history of any no, surgery okay. if you ask him do you have any urological history you won't know what to say and your history may not only be urological you might want others also so you have to ask the patient pointed questions okay so what are those pointed questions you will ask the patient one thing for example he says frank okay There is no mention of radiation, so I would like to know whether there is any radiation. Second thing, again, it's a 35-year-old with lung pain, so I'll think of what are the possible diagnoses in a 35-year-old, and related to that, I'll ask for symptoms which are more detailed. Third, as a routine, we ask for bowel habit, appetite, and any change in weight. Okay, uh, these have to be asked. Yes. Sir. Whatever your uh, diagnosis eventually may be, and if the patient has pain for two weeks, is it associated with fever? They have said here yeah, there is no fever. Fine. Okay. These are the questions that you should ask anybody at thirty-five presenting with flank pain. Yes. Sir. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, there was no past history of uh, similar complaints, and uh, he was not known in case of uh, diabetes, hypertension. Uh, one second here, Pravin. Yes, sir. See uh, this first line: no past history of similar complaints. Yes, sir. If he had past history, you should include that in the presenting complaint. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Supposing he had flank pain six months, one year, two years ago. So yes, he sir. He had a similar history of flank pain. Yes, Three years ago, or six months ago, or whatever, and yes, whatever treatment was done. Don't bring it to the history of presenting complaints. Okay. Sir. What is it coming next? Now carry on. Yes, and uh, sir, some examiners might expect uh, the students to tell the similar complaints on the opposite side. Sir, if it is absent, we need not. Sir, sir. No problem. You can put all that in here. Presenting complaint. Okay. First, we put that in history of presenting complaint. Okay. So presenting complaints must be brief, yes, concise, yes, and should include all positives and any negative in the presenting complaint. That means the patient has come, sat in front of you, what he has told you. Yes, sir. History of presenting complaint is when you start eliciting the history. Yes. Sir. That's why we always used to say symptoms, and then history of. Symptoms. Presenting complaints, 
history of presenting complaints because history he won't volunteer presenting complaints he'll volunteer that is the essential difference okay yes sir yeah let's get on yeah pain on the opposite side or when you have pain on this side if you have any other symptoms which are not present now but don't beat around the bush too much because you'll get lost very early okay sir and uh, there was no uh, past surgical uh, history uh, this last two mentioned history we came back from the uh, initial provisional diagnosis and asked these negative histories sir so you hadn't asked this history earlier no sir we did not ask this history previous yeah. presentation you should okay yes sir to write us might not be jaundice alteration in bowel habits stool character also you might miss that's all right cough hemoptysis loss of weight loss of appetite all this must come here yes sir that uh, that weight and uh, appetite we have covered in this one personal issue so all the gi complaints you can put together yes sir okay uh, there was no weight loss the he was not known to have any substance abuse and uh, there was no family history of uh, urolithiasis or malignancy he had no loss of appetite will you stop at this when you want something more in the family history this gentleman is 35 so then fluid intake and uh, output urine output no no, no in the history can conditions occur around the age of 35 which come with a family history are there any urological disorders which can cause flank pain for the first time around the age of 35 which are known to be associated with the family history any cystic disease of the kidney cell like adult uh, dominant polycystic kidney disease yeah. in the family oh so you have to put that first don't say any cystic disease uh, all of you residents listening in don't begin your sentence with any this any that okay any cystic disease then i'll call it multiplastic multicystic dysplastic kidney so if you go to the point and say any family history how will you know whether it was uh, if it came uh, under polycystic kidney disease from history how will you suspect uh sir so in in patient with uh, no, no, polycystic no, 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 no. this patient 35 year old male two weeks flank pain no other complaints how will you suspect by history that there might be autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease a similar history in the family member 3 or 4 three no similar history family members might have had flank pain for various reasons here is where we have to ask pointed questions otherwise the patient will waste your time what are the history uh, points that refer to edpkd one you want to know whether any other family member had any kidney disease correct yes he won't know the details if he says yes two three people had kidney disease then you'll go and say is there any family member who had such complaints and died young or is on dialysis or had to undergo some surgery that is what family history means yes right Yes. Really? Yes. Skin disease. Uh, Those are pain populations. Pain gauge can also be asked, no sir. Secondary hypertension. S- sorry. The family history of uh, uh, family members developing hypertension at the pain gauge. See again, hypertension. He might not know. Let us assume it's a common, you know, middle class, urban, semi-urban or rural patient walking in. Yes, sir. Don't know all these medical terms, but he can tell you yes, he had kidney disease. is undergoing dialysis if you young males died early okay or his father had and he also had yes sir such history you can get so that is what we should be asking was there any hypertension was there any altered sensorium no 
Okay. Let's get on. Uh, that's all the history, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Arthik, free. You can ask him anything you want. Manish, would you like to add anything? So, when you ask for a history, uh, the, you have to ask in terms of what if if i'm dealing with a particular disease what is the stage of the disease then you have to ask history in terms of differential so when you're asked suddenly that you can ask whatever you want try and organize your questions in terms of this if this is a malignancy metastatic disease then there will be weight loss if it is stone disease there might be a history one question i would like to ask about family history is was there uh, is there is it important to ask for a family history in any other urological condition adpkd we have discussed any other very common condition which can have a family history and present at 35 with right flank pain let's leave out stone disease from this angiomyelopoma hey, common common yeah and praveen hardik is present yes Maybe you can't present in discuss. Are they yes. going to discuss? Okay, does PUJ obstruction have <laughs> uh, a family history? Is there a known incidence in families in PUJ obstruction? The answer is yes. <laughs> Okay, so okay. neck pain, family history. You know whether there was any kidney problem. Purely obstruction is one. Any other? There are quite a few actually. And is there an um, gen genetic disorder like VHL syndrome or a cerebral sclerosis? Okay, I'll grant you that, but it doesn't come here. More common ones. We said stone disease. We said polycystic kidney. We said the more common purely obstruction. Any other condition manifests with flank pain? Mohan, Mohan, can I add? Uh, well, please, uh, all of you, welcome to pitch in any time. On the family history, uh, a patient may come. We may not know whether he has got a twin. If we are going to look at many things in urology which have got a family history, then if he's got a twin, it's worthwhile knowing that because sometimes not necessarily pain in the right flank, but just any other history. Even if, say, for example. PUJ obstruction, uh, reflux. Those are all in slightly younger age group, but testicular cancer, for example, somebody has got testicular cancer, he's 30, 30, 34. You can get, so if there's an identical twin, sometimes these things might help. We may not diverse this to you. Also, when you're looking at ADPKD, a sudden death uh, due to rupture of berry aneurysm, sudden death in the family is also well described in patients who do have uh, ADPKD, suspected family history. So there is some uh, family preponderance in certain urological conditions. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Rick is still wondering. <laughs> okay. Can we move on? I think can we move on? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, on examination, uh, um, BP is a uh, uh, higher level, like 140 by 90 mmLg. Um, but we can't say as a hypertension because required, sir, uh, blood pressure measurement on two more occasions at uh, two different times, sir. You cannot rule out hypertension if the pressure is normal. But if the pressure is elevated at your first measurement, it is always hypertension, but before starting treatment, you will check on one or two occasions. Okay, so get this straight. If it is high at your first examination, it is high. Significance we'll see as we go along. This uh, SpO2 is now become standard, is it because of COVID? I think so. I think. Everybody comes in a saturation done, eh? They are doing all this, I think, even before uh, uh, 
you will reach a doctor in many cases. As part of high weight, attach the pulse oximeter keeps the patient happy when he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think if you're done, fine. Otherwise, if you want yes. to more, ask him. Systemic examination. Sir. Okay, I, I want to ask one small question related to what was shown, but not necessarily related to the case. When and in whom will we decide to look at oxygen saturation? What are the indications for measuring oxygen saturation? Patient presenting with sir, dyspnea. Okay. Patient with uh, um, trauma, sir, head trauma or abdominal injury. Serious injury, okay. Patient has got no complaints, he's quite comfortable. Respiratory rate is 40. That itself is a giveaway. Respiratory rate 40 is a giveaway. It's a big clue. Patient could be a smoker. As a consequence of smoking, some other things happen to make the respiratory rate 40. COPD or asthma. He could more commonly he could be having what if he's a smoker. CA lungs at calcium. No, that's rarer than COPD. But what is it he could be having in a smoker which causes this? And then you know you are mandated to do an ABG to find out what it could be. Can it be emphysema? Yes. See emphysema is a condition which comes on gradually. And people might not notice it because the level of activity is low. Right? So if he's a smoker, you want to measure if you find his respiratory rate is also high. Unexplained high respiratory rate, you want to check oxygenation. Anything else on general examination which will make you check oxygen saturation? Particularly in children. We may miss it because we are urologists. If there is cyanosis or clubbing on general exam, yes. okay. Yes. Sir. There are circumstances where we will screen so that we know at the beginning that all this is pending has to be done. Mohan, I think all this is forgotten in uh, urology <laughs> examination: clubbing, cyanosis. Respiratory rate. I don't think this is now part of any urological examination at all. <laughs> Probably difficult in the end of it. Okay, let's go on. Carry on, carry on. I think you have to read out, please. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, Abdomen examinations are soft, non-tender, no mass palpable. On local examination, external genital, meat is normal, both test is palpable, sir. On digital rectal examination, normal, chest is a normal vesicular breathing. So, no positive findings are on the systemic examination. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, sir, this patient 34 years uh, with uh, flank pain since two weeks and uh, not associated with any fever, immature, or lower urinary tract symptom. To now, support. If you have found an examination, let us say. Would you like to ask the patient some more details? Examination has not picked up anything. Would you ask the patient some more details? It should have appeared earlier, but that's all right. You can ask even now. Any sir, fullness of abdomen? Sorry? 
pullness, plank pullness, sir? That you would have seen on examination. Patient don't know. You want to ask the patient. You know, as a double check kind of thing. One of the things we are always told is find out as to whether the patient has had a similar complaint earlier and whether he's had any treatment in the recent past for something similar to this. It may be very non-specific, but unless you ask him that question, he will never be, he won't tell you. So, you know, definitely asking him for a similar history or even treatment as he been, you know, for two weeks he's been going around with pain. The severity of the pain would make somebody go to a hospital, take some medication, did it improve? You know, those sort of questions may be asked, especially when the findings are negative. In fact, you should ask this even before you examine the patient. Yes. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want. You have to tell them to move. Uh, sir, uh, this uh, 34 year patient with uh, two weeks of uh, plank pain and no history of. This 35. Sir, hello. He was 35. Uh, sir, 35 years uh, with the plank pain and no history of hematuria, lower immune tract symptom or fever, sir. So, to support my different cell diagnosis, I require uh, uh, investigation important, in form of. Importantly. No positive finding on examination. You only covered history. You didn't mention anything about examination. Yes. You say this less history and no positive finding on clinical examination. Okay. Yes. So to support my differential um, diagnosis, uh, I want uh, investigation in form of urine routine examination. What is your differential diagnosis that you want uh -huh. to support? So my first uh, differential diagnosis is urolithiasis. Okay. Second is sir uh, ureteropelvic junction obstruction. Okay. Third uh, sir congenital uh, congenital in form of sir ureterocellular primary obstructive mega ureter. Sir. Hey, Dr. Ganesh, you were in the last class told you think. Congenital, inflammatory, infective, uh, neoplastic, degenerative, right? So, in your differential diagnosis, also things along the same way. What congenital conditions? You can't go from stone to something else. What congenital conditions? So, uh, primary obstructive mega ureter, ureter Is it the most common at 35? No, sir. Uh, UPG of uh, ureteropelvic junction obstruction. Sir. Say that first, okay? So you can pause for a second or two before you answer the examiner. Don't rush into wrong answers, right? Could you can be in fact begin by saying congenital conditions like so he knows that you have other things also. Uh, so congenital conditions like polyuretic junction obstruction, mega ureter, ureters. Ureters, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, sir, uh, cystic disease of the kidney. Uh. Again, don't what cystic disease is 35 unless you specify. But is there something more common congenitally? Photosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, sir. More common. You are talking about the ureter. Anything related to the ureter which can give rise to flank pain like this? Nothing was there suddenly some two weeks ago. I got this pain and three days later I was over. Rare, but as a congenital condition it is common. At 35, yes, it's not so common. But we have had surprises. I think one was presented actually. Can it be vesicoerotic reflux? Yeah, so put all that. See, you thought of kidney, then you came down to the ureter, go right down to the ureter of a Can it be anything in the bladder which is given in plant pain? Congenital condition. No, isn't it? No, sir. Yes. Because the bladder pathology is usually 
has bilateral impact on the upper tract. So unilateral pain, unlikely to be anything in the bladder. Vesicoelectric junction, yes. Now after congenital, then let's go to acquired. In acquired, we have what is the commonest? How much uh, urolithiasis? Urolithiasis. Right? Anything else in acquired? Inflammatory conditions, sir. Uh, okay, you want to go to inflammatory. Fine. It's a uh, pyelonephritis, but uh, maybe it associated with uh, sir, fever and uh, nausea, vomiting. Uh, Hade, when you present this, you can present it this way. You can say pyelonephritis, but here there is no history of fever. And urine examination is normal if it is. You don't know. Right? Yes. But, uh, here you have to justify. Why you are not considering it? So, or you don't justify, say, pyelonephritis and leave it at that. We will discuss later on which one of this is likely. Okay. Inflammatory is pyelonephritis. Anything else? We actually put pyelonephritis in infected and then accept it. Okay. And sir, so renal um, mass in the form B9 mass most common, sir, angioma, lipoma. Under which category does that come? Sir, a ne a neoplasty. In ETR, the neoplasty. That is much later. So after inflammatory, what but inflammatory is at all? Emphysematous pyelonatory, the gentogram. So oh, okay. Sir, GUTV. It is infected. Anybody else wants to give Hardik a little relief by answering this and not Praveen? Any other inflammatory conditions that can present with pain? Hitrogate and fibrosis. Mm, okay, too young for it, but okay. <coughs> okay, let's move on. We'll take this up in discussion. So in inflammatory, you had pyelon nephritis, retroperitoneal fibrosis. Okay, infective. Oh, sir, rare, but GUTB, sir. Yes. Patient don't have any uh, storage symptoms on lip tank pain. When we and talk of infective, we have non-specific infections and specific infections. Correct? Yes. So. Give it in one order, either specific ones first, non-specific later, or the more common non-specific and the specific comes after that. What are the non-specific infections which can cause this? Not organism, infections and pathology. Is there something about toilet infections? Uh, yeah, I yeah. Where? Uh, Go on. Yeah, uh, impassimatus pyelonephritis, sir. Why impassimatus, man? Why can't it be simple, acute pyelonephritis? Pyelonephritis. See, don't go to extremes, Baba. Please, you'll be murdered and hacked in the examination. You yourself said under inflammatory pyelonephritis. I said no. We treat that as an infective condition. So, pyelonephritis. Is it acute pyelonephritis, chronic pyelonephritis? What is more likely? Acute In this patient, sir? Uh, in this patient only, everything in this patient. Sir, only flank pain, uh, not associated with fever or any nausea, vomiting, okay. any urine exam. The let us assume he is not giving us any clear history. He says, I went to some doctor, took some tablets, I was all right. Okay. It may be due to a chronic pyelonephritis then. Chronic pyelonephritis, two weeks history. Which pyelonephritis presents with an acute course? Comes on suddenly, pain, few other symptoms. Is treated and the symptoms gradually disappear. 
ticket file on your books. Yeah, why are you confusing things and complicating matters? He said, okay, this is acute paranoia. What else can you do? Infective condition. Patient does not give a history of substance abuse. But he may not he may not give you the correct history. He is scared that you will report it to the cops. You have had pain, lifelong pain related to that. Of course, he doesn't have fever again, but right flank pain gets, it starts with that only. Many conditions first start with the pain and then the fever comes on. Is there any connection? Supposing this fellow was taking substance abuse, was, I mean, was a, a guy who was a druggie. Is there any connection between that and pain, flank pain? Are drugs taken, are all these substance drugs taken orally or can they be injected also? Are they? Injected also. Injected. Can you get infection from an injection? Yes, a thrombophlebitis. Thrombophlebitis. Supposing I am sharing syringes and needles, this is what these fellows do, isn't it? Can you get something else as a result of this? Injection. May I answer, sir? Huh? Hardik? Wait, wait. We'll, we'll let Hardik think. See, any infusion, any intravenous injection carries a risk of certain serious complications, not just local thrombophlebitis. So, what are the serious complications of intravenous drug administration, therapeutic or recreational? Doesn't matter. So Hardik, let me give you a hint. Uh, if a particular organism grows in a renal abscess, you go and look for this history. So what are we talking about? You already told you, man. He <laughs> said renal abscess. Yes. Uh, so, in IV drug users, uh, renal abscess uh, may be presenting compared to frank pain and then fever develops. Uh. What organism will it be? That is, what, that is what leads us to ask the history after the surgery. Sometimes we miss it before surgery. What organism? Did it come with the drugs or did it go through with the skin? Step for uh, aureus. Step for the caucus. Right? No, there can be multi drug involvement if syringes are being exchanged around. Okay, so now we have uh, PUE obstruction. Sorry, we yeah, have under infected. We have acute pyelonephritis. We've got a renal abscess. What else? Hardik, you should think a little fast. Eh? We are losing time. Sir, neoplastic condition. No, no, no. Infective. Like a renal abscess, can there be any other infective pathology involving the collecting system of the kidney? Abscess are usually in the cortex and then they grow in the collecting system. Especially if there is an associated congenital condition. Can it be infected adenophrosis? Yes, infected adenophrosis. Why are you taking so much time? I think we have to move, you know, you get only 20 minutes in the exam. Okay. We we'll leave infected for the time being. Any specific infections which can cause this? You already mentioned GUT. Acted by answer GUT. You already mentioned GUT. But, hmm. 
Right, do we move? And uh, what about the other conditions? New plus degenerative. So neoplastic uh, in form of sir, uh, angiomyelipoma as a benign. Again, benign malignant. Uh, sir, Which is sir. more common, a uh, benign tumor is more common in the kidney or malignant tumors? Think carefully before answering this question. Oh. Benign condition, sir. If you open the table in Campbell about renal tumors and see, please do that. You'll remember in your exam, it lists out the incident types of tumors in the kidney. Of those, benign tumors come last. Okay, most Some matters. Tumors Metastatic. Sorry? Like, no, no, must, first the primary, then the metastasis. So, malignant tumor, primary, what type of malignant tumor, possibly, and then occasionally secondaries from other organs, but secondaries don't present this way. They present differently. Okay. Any degenerative condition? Dr. Prabhakar, do you want to ask anything? No, sir. I am just uh, watching. No problem. You okay? Yeah, yeah, fine, sir. Shall we move on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's move on. Ron, investigation HP is 12.6. Uh, total count uh, 14,870. Uh, little higher side, sir. Uh -huh. Little higher side or higher side? Higher side, sorry. Sir. Higher side, sir. But neutrophils are normal, sir. Uh, and other investigations are normal, sir. Uh, sodium, potassium and creatinine. So the only thing in differential diagnosis that I mentioned. Where are the lymphocytes? Instead, they are mentioning something else. Then maybe, sir, chances of chronic condition or tuberculosis in that uh, lymphocytosis is there, sir. There is no lymphocytosis. That's a problem. There is no mention of lymphocytes. But instead, there is something else. Eight point four. What is that? Eosinophils. Normal, abnormal. Abnormal, sir. What conditions of the kidney can cause eosinophilia? In your urinary tract. Okay, we'll take this up during discussion. Let's move on. Let's not get stuck here. Ajit, generally speaking, yes, eosinophilia is a telltale sign for some form of malignancy. Okay? And when you have some who has got right flank pain and you have differentials. It is actually a poor prognostic indicator. If you have eosinophils on the cells also, it's not a very good thing. So, you know, these eosinophils do suggest an allergic reaction, but they are now becoming more and more important in terms of looking at prognosis. So, obviously, when somebody writes it like this, eosinophils 8.4, you should, you should get attracted towards it and say, oh, my God, there's something happening here. We have to be careful. <laughs> Okay, sir. Yeah. On urine analysis, sir, uh, pH is 6, specific rate is 1.02. And, uh, sir, WBC 122 and RBC nil, sir. Urine culture, no growth, sir. Uh. So, is this normal, abnormal? Sir, normal urine examination. Okay. So, what do you want us to do next? Uh, to rule out, uh, sir. Again, don't begin with that. You are digging yourself into a deep hole. We are not doing to... anything else. We are searching. We are not yet ruling out. So, sir, so XIKB and 
अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी एब्डोम एक्सरे के यू बी एंड अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी ऑफ एब्डोम एक्सरे के यू बी अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी वो एक्सरे के यू बी टू रोल आउट सर स्टोन डिसीज एंड ओके देन वही अल्ट्रासोन टू अदर सर डिफरेंस सर टू रोल आउट लाइक इंफ्लामेटरी कोज देन पीयूजे ऑब्सट्रक्शन सर कैन यू फाइंड अ नॉर्मल के यू बी विथ स्टोन एंड अल्ट्रासोन Yes, sir. It can be, but uh, sir, it will be helpful on follow up for X-ray K U B with the radio optic so, uh, for the. If you ask the question why K U B, you can say to look for radio optic stones and ultrasound to look for stones and other pathologies. What does other pathologies are? We'll begin with hydronephrosis, and then we we'll look at the renal parenchyma, the parenchymal tissue, the uh, collecting system, pulmonary tract junction. And if you can see ureter, ureter, and bladder. Okay, so this flow must be in your mind. Okay, let's move on. What is important here is that you have said that this patient has got leukocytosis. He's got a high white cell count, but with pain. And one of your differential diagnoses was an infection, and this is not being supported by your urine examination and your culture. You should say that. At this point, because one of your differentials is is an infection, isn't it? Yes. And uh, there is no support at the moment. It may be there, but at the moment it's not there. So this should come out and say that well, this looks. I I have to explain why he's got a high white cell count. It's not being supported by your exam. <coughs> okay. Can who have they? Can you finish? Yes, sir. Uh, X-ray can be done. Yeah. And uh, regarding this ultrasound and X-ray, X-ray is not only for stone. Even sometimes you can miss a stone in the X-ray if it is radio lesion, and ultrasound can pick up. So, if you if you are if you want to rule out a stone disease, it's better that you go with X-ray as well as ultrasound, not only the X-ray. Yes, sir. So, what do you want, sir? Uh, अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी ऑफ एब्डोम नाउ यू सी फॉर वेरी एब्डोमिनल पेन मेनी प्लेसेस स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ केयर इज अ सीटी सो डू यू स्टिल वांट एन अल्ट्रासाउंड और डू यू वांट टू डू अ सीटी यू मस्ट गिव रीजंस आल्सो फॉर योर चॉइस Think carefully before you answer this question. You don't have to agree with Dr. Mohan with everything he says. You have to support your 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 argument. He's putting you, giving you a leading question now. You think carefully before you answer this argument. रीजन in uh, ultrasound sir we can know about the uh, renal parenchyma including the presence of hydronephrosis and uh, parenchyma thickness based on this uh, finding sir we can uh, order like uh, we required contrast ct or non contrast ct if like only stone disease is there then we can go for only nccd kub or if uh, sir um, gross hydronephrosis with thinning of parenchyma in that uh, we requires a contrast study to look for uh, contrast excretion and Okay, I have two arguments which you have to answer to. One, whatever you are saying can be seen also on CT at the same time, and in any case, when we do a diagnostic CT for a patient like this, we are going to do a multifacetic CT. All is taking round in circles. Don't get stuck stuck into it. Sometimes it's very important to stay focused on what you want. No, yeah, don't get. You should, sometimes this is more than just needing, hoping that you guys know exactly what you're doing. You don't have to agree all the time with the examiners. 
is training you so radius and exposure in more cities can first uh, we have to start with the investigation with uh, mobile less invasive and uh, less radius and exposure uh, uh, i think if you heard our discussions over the past year and more you have discussed this very often the reason for doing ultrasound sometimes is to plan our ct technique okay uh, we had all those discussions about uh, ct urogram and then uh, a contrast ct and then a multi dose ct and then a triphasic ct you know uh, all that we don't do in everybody sometimes an ultrasound is a good guide for example you said thinned out parenchyma excretion from that side is likely to be poor so whether we will take delayed films much later for the excretory phase to see what's happening on the right side you get a good idea about all this especially if you are referring this patient outside for a ct scan on the other hand there might be people who argue that no we'll do a plain ct see you can make out right angle phases you can make out all that on the plain ct depending on that uh, we will plan what to do with the contrast give it not give it if we give it in what way to give it in what films to take you can also add one more to that to that plain ct saying that since my primary diagnosis here is stone disease first diagnosis it's likely that an ultrasound might miss it and nccct will tell me whether he's got a stone at all or not in addition to that it will tell me something else so there are many ways by which you can answer your question and all this is just training to make sure that you guys are on your feet all the time isn't it it doesn't mean that if dr mohan says something that you have to agree with him he is trying to train you fellows you know this is what it is so you have to stand your stand your ground and say this is what i want you know and you have to do it so you got to think out of the box sometimes huh? but you know that if for a, for a stone you will do an ncct today everybody does it so use that argument and get get to uh, explain your point also if you say that the ultrasound is a road map for you you can say that you can say it's a road map for me to decide as to how i'm going to proceed so both ways you know you got to you got to think out of the box as i said sometimes Yes, sir. What do you want now, Arvik? Ultrasonography of abdomen, sir. Okay, it's easier. Uh, sir, on ultrasound, sir, sixteen into seven centimeter large right kidney cyst and thin calcific foci. hydronephrosis no calcula and ureter is normal sir left kidney and bladder is normal what descriptions are missing what important descriptions are missing in this sir a handicap to you sir uh, cyst whether uh, internal echo is present or not uh-huh. don't you want to know where the cyst is is it an exophytic cyst is it within the parenchyma is it parapelvic you want to know right first yes. of all location of the cyst right then content of the cyst sir uh-huh. then uh, content something else which comes before content on which an entire classification of cysts has been developed patients of sir septa wall thickness right. whether regular or not marginal Sept- well defined patients of septae not wall thickness whether septae are present if they are present how are they septae are they thin are they thick do they have solid areas which are uh, butting into the collecting system so septic then comes the characteristic of the content whether it is clear or whether it is heterogeneous or whether there is something very specific about the contents of the cyst the recent hemorrhage can be picked up on ultrasound right and yes. if there was a cause of this pain you know, or the plank pain you would uh, get to know 
And what is the significance of this calcific foci? Where do they become significant and in which locations are they not significant? <laughs> In uh, sir, uh, renal area, it will be significant. In uh, kidney, it will be significant. I'm talking yes. about cysts. In a cyst, calcification can be present in multiple locations or in different conditions. Which calcifications you can ignore and say, oh, this is all right. Which calcifications will be important? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, curvilinear calcification, um, it may be present in the simple cyst also. Yeah. So, we can Hathay. ignore that. Hathay. You have not understood my question. You just have to tell me what type of calcification and present where is a danger mark and you will take note of. Whereas the others you can put away to the side for some time. Arthik, if the content, uh, the contents in the cyst are all calcified versus uh, the wall is calcified, which will con concern you more? Wall calcification. Yeah, so any other locations where calcifications are important? Septa, sorry, septa, calcification, septa. Yes, so Hardik, you have to learn to answer questions without being prompted so much. You will not be prompted like this in the exam, I, I would suppose. So, what what would you want next then? So, is, does that answer your uh, question? Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yes. <laughs> Unless we know this, we might find something in the you know, uh, cortex of the cyst and we keep on looking at it and wondering what it is. It might not be important. Whereas even a millimeter calcification found within the cyst wall or in any of the septic, that becomes important. If there are soft tissue associated with uh, the cyst, calcifications there become important. That's all we have to think. And the next question is there is hydronephrosis. Is it because of the cyst or is it because of something else? Okay, Hardik, what will you do next? Sir, uh, um, uh, I require uh, contrast and then, sir, uh, computed tomography of uh, abdomen and pelvis. Yeah, so when sir asks you there is hydronephrosis, you say that I will try and answer with more imaging. Sometimes you can even get it with ultrasound. But yes, it will probably need more imaging. Okay, so, Praveen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, move on. Um. Go down slowly, show all the images. Yeah, wait, stay here. What do you see? These are plain films. What do you see? So, left kidney is normal, sir. On the right side, large uh, right kidney swelling is present in the around 10 into 8 centimeters, sir. Is it, With, uh, is it kidney? Can you say that? Look at the bottom right, the last image. Look at the first image and then see whether this can be kidney or this could be something else. The kidney, sorry, contrast axis and present on the right side of that. Well, are they, along, are they, you are not understanding many questions. After looking at the bottom row, do you think what you are seeing in the top row is a cyst, is a cyst in the kidney or could it be something other than the kidney? 
Is it within the kidney? Is it outside the kidney? Outside. Can you trace this mass in continuation with the kidney? Or is there a clear demarcation? Separate. If you look at Dr. Mohan wants you to look at the bottom right image. Stay there, stay there. Stay on that image. Ravid, just look at the just look at that image and see carefully. Maybe you forgot the first image also, which was without any contrast, I think. Sir, so it's the same axial section of uh, non-contrast, contrast yeah. and heat. Yes. Contrast mm -hmm. There's one more. The previous image also was there. Didn't you showed one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is the next one, not the previous. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, uh, just go up probably for a second to the earlier image. This is a much very nice. This is a much better image. This is the second image, sir. Okay. It's all right. Leave it be. So, large cyst is present along with uh, multiple uh, cyst and uh, septa inside that large cyst, sir. They are not multiple cysts inside. That has a different connotation. Are these, these are septic, right? Yes, sir. Uh, are the septa thin, thick? Thin, sir. Thin septa with uh, no calcification. Are you calcifying, not calcifying? Not enhancing, sir. Not enhancing. Can you answer from this? Or do you want more films to answer that? So we can't hear you, sir. Can you make out from this whether they are enhancing or not enhancing from that film? Can you hear me now? Huh. Yes, sir. So not enhancing, sir. When will you decide that you have seen enough to say <coughs> these septic are non enhancing. When will you decide that I have seen everything, septic are non enhancing? Do the septic get enhanced early or late? So after viewing, sir, early, sir. What's the explanation for early enhancement? See, may you see early enhancement of any structure which is arterialized. Correct? Vascular, arterialized. Then we see contrast early. A septa arterialized and highly vascular? No, sir. So, normal no grade 1, 2 grade septa, will you see them opacifying early, late, or even 2, 3, 4? Sir, so late, sir. Therefore, don't say here they are not enhancing. If they enhance, you actually have a problem at hand. Right? Yes, sir. And then there was something about calcifications. What are the calcifications? Any more films? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so you have seen all the earlier films. Is it the stick mass arising from the kidney or is it outside the kidney? If you want to review, see again. Hold it there. No, go back, hold it there. Here. Yeah. 
Arising from kidney sir, we not seen uh, kidney separately from this thing. So kidney separately, I mean, kidney has got one thing, fascia, this might be arising just outside the fascia or it might be just outside the cortex, it might not be involved in the kidney. Or it might be in the cortex, not involved in the parenchyma. But first thing you see is that the kidney is compressed, correct? Yes. Once the kidney is compressed, we have to look for signs which will tell us this is arising from the kidney or not arising. And a pattern of compression usually tells us that. So any, ex any extra renal mass like this will displace and rotate the kidney, will not compress it. So if the kidney is getting compressed, as you can see in the last film, you see the pincer sign or the uh, crab sign or the meniscus sign or whatever we call it between the cyst and the kidney. That indicates to us that this is arising from the kidney. In fact, in the uh, third film, you can actually see it is reaching well into the uh, uh, kidney, into the middle of the kidney. Okay. Yes. So that's how we have to differentiate. But one point we still have to answer is what happened to the calcification? If you don't have an answer, you can say, well, I don't have an answer. Not a problem. Sir, no, not present, sir, calcification. You have not seen calcification so far. Uh, yes. Or are you seeing something a little different at the rim of the cyst? Sir, present of uh, multiple small uh, cystic lesion. No, Baba. Here, the rim of the cyst, do you find it a little denser? than the rest of the rim in the lower portion. Anteriorly, does the cyst wall appear different from what it appears posteriorly? Yes. Or even lateral, what's the difference? Density is more, sir, in the yeah, upper. So it does appear hyperdense compared to other parts of the cyst. We don't know what its significance is because it certainly doesn't look like calcifications. Okay. Do you want us to move on or spend more time here? Move on, sir. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Praveen, your fingers must be strapped, man. Let him see the others also. We said calcifications, they might be present somewhere else. And there are other structures he has to see. Don't we have the excretory phase? <laughs> um, all the four so pages, the images the images images. Images are there, huh? the first one is the non enhanced phase, second image, this is the uh, arterial phase, this is portal phase, and this is the uh, uh, delayed phase. Huh? All the four phases are there of the corresponding axial sections. You are happy that it is delayed enough, Ravid? Sir? Are you happy that it is delayed enough? Yes, sir. Why are you happy? It's so the contrast is already there in the PCS, sir. Here. If it's there in the PCS, it's enough for you? Uh, no, sir. We would have taken one more uh, after uh, delay, one, one hour or 30 minutes to Why? for the drainage. For the ureter, man, you are not seeing the ureter opacified anywhere. On the left side, you can see. Right side, where is the ureter? Sir, this is the ureter, sir, here. Yeah, but it's not opacified. Yeah. In the last image, there is a little bit of yeah, opacification. Yeah. I won't buy that. I'll call it calcification rather than opacification. Okay, are they, can we move on? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, you may, uh, report is there. Okay, read out the report. Sir, right kidney, liver, gallbladder, spleen. Uh, Normal uh, right kidney is enlarged and so multi loculated hypo attenuating lesion involving the inter and lower pole. And it measures around 16 into 8 into 8 centimeter volume 5000 cc. One small technical correction there is no interpolar, there is an interpolar region. 
there can only be two poles. Okay. So don't write like this when you write your report. See, involve the interpolar region and the lower poles. Lower pole. There are no lower poles. Okay. And the tray, the largest is so multiple regular cyst daughter cyst occupying almost entire volume of the cyst. The daughter cyst so lower density than the maternal matrix. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, sir, presence of the. Uh, Mother cyst along with the daughter cyst, uh, it is uh, a renal hydrated cyst, sir. You think it's a renal hydrated? Okay. Did we miss something in history? Did we, don't go back to history. I'm just asking you, we should remember this. Did we miss something in history? Ah. In uh, sir, it which region he staying in endemic area? Sir. No, no. Come on. What endemic for what? Filariasis. No, sir. Hydrated Junosis. Sorry. Junosis, sir. Uh, like. Do you know which see? all area belong to the endemic areas? He gives some details of the places. No. Sir. So don't mention something which is outlandish. Something we could have taken in history, which is of individual nature, which was missing in the history. Even after they went back. Don't you want to know what diet he eats? Yes. Well, endemic area know that is yeah. So there is no endemic area for teenagers. It is seen worldwide. He is a vegetarian. He is a vegetarian. Then how do you explain this? We have confirmed thrice that he is a pure vegetarian. From contamination of the pores are even vegetarian. But, uh, sir. So contamination, it means the vegetables are not being cleaned and cooked fully. So you think these are hydratic cysts? Do you want to confirm or simply go ahead? Um, sir, uh, uh, it is confirmed in the radiologically. Uh, and uh, going sir, renal hydratases. The question is there are cysts with daughter cysts related to the right kidney. Is that enough for you to go ahead and treat this patient? Or do you want some confirmatory tests? Uh, sir, I um, Uh, there is a serological test also there, sir, for diagnosis. There are serological her. tests. Do you want to do them? Don't want to do them. Huh. Okay, when is it mandatory for you to do a serology before you do anything? Okay, we'll find out what your management is. Prevent move on. If it's a management slide, don't put it up. That's for Hardik to answer. Is there any other area? So, what is the management, Hardik? So, looking back, that eosinophil count here it makes a difference. Exactly. Count. See, exactly. This is where you know we ignore the small things and can't stitch things together. Your examiner will be very impressed if you say, sir, on this it looks like a parasitic cyst. Even the eosinophil count was elevated. So, what is the management therapy? What do you want to do? Uh, sir, uh, 
there is a sir large is compressing the renal pharynx hey, don't, don't go back to the description uh, sir peristectomy sir Uh, in form of lap oblique open sir peristectomy renal cystectomy wait 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 what do you want to do renal cystectomy what do you want to do knee roofing of this is uh, different option for the cyst but cyst is large so we will go for peristectomy are you talking about a dilated cyst are you talking about any renal cyst sir i did it sir you will do de roofing if uh, no sir uh, peristectomy then will you do peristectomy straight away no sir but first we have to sir uh, uh, aspirate the cyst straight away question is does this patient require any medication prior to any intervention on the cyst or can we directly go into intervention dr prabhakar sir in uh, sir you can ask him very good <laughs> so okay so you are asking yes sir dik sir there is a no role of uh, medication like albendazole or mebendazole uh, in case of renal hydatid cyst it won't okay. no case for medication as a primary treatment for the cyst before surgery does the patient require anything you have to read up on this all of you okay and then you are posting this cyst for peristectomy or whatever what are the preparations you will make in the ot and instructions you will give to the ot team this is not every day case so are there any instructions that must be given um i will uh, in com minus that is there may be chances of uh, if cyst uh, contain is leak then chances of anaphylactic reaction so okay uh, be careful okay And also will be careful with what sir take all the accessory medical in the form of epinephrine epinephrine or uh, like steroid you will tell them it's a hydatid cyst and then they take what are precautions okay what else What are the preparations with the OT team? Okay. This you have to read. Okay, it's not as simple as the other renal uh, uh, surgical procedures or uh, for renal tumor or for simple renal cysts. This you have to read. You also have to read about post cystectomy management, and you also have to read about if you find the hydatid cyst in one place, does this require further evaluation of other common sites? CT only does that partially. Okay. Yes. So we have the uh, images, some more images. We'll yeah. discuss it next week. Okay. Right. The operative findings and the RGP, all that. Sure, Manish. So somebody from any will present. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'll present. Kamal will present. Kamal will present. Okay, excellent. We'll do that. Okay, folks. Then thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, we have celebrations today, sir. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please. Use the library. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.